and foil around it. So, I mean, this has got to be an improvement, right? What do you guys think? Hey, what happened to the music, man? You literally just paused it. No, I didn't. <laughs> you were like, this music. I rewound it. My nerve. It's like subliminally. You gotta have background music for the for the people to enjoy. Do you guys like our new ring light? They don't. Must not be on the right shade then. Joyce, how did you feel about the film The Outlaw Josie Wales? I enjoyed it as I have enjoyed most of our Clint Eastwood movies except for that 70s period. Oh, the one where he was um, he was staying in the girls' school and yeah. he sleeps with all the girls. Wasn't a f big fan of that one. She, they're never too young for kisses. Ugh. <laughs> Um, you know what, this is really, this Outlaw Josie Wales has really made me feel like, it'd been a long time since I watched all these movies, I saw them a bunch as like a kid and as a teenager. Yeah, I had seen this one before. I mean, I've seen it before, but I was like, the whole time I'm watching this Outlaw Josie Wales, I was waiting for scenes to happen that I guess it turns out are in other movies. It is kind of hard to remember which Clint Eastwood Western that you're remembering. Especially when every single one of his Westerns is him getting fucked up in the beginning. <laughs> they are really... Like he dies, same. basically. And then he goes on a mission of hot-blooded revenge. I think that might be why, like, a, um, Paint the Town Red or whatever it's called was my favorite. The Pale Rider? I thought, when I was watching Pale Rider, I was like, I, I thought this was a different movie. That's the one where he has the town folk paint the town red and basically get themselves into a situation. Right, I remember that now, but like... I think that was my favorite. I was waiting favorite. for the train part to come. I think that's in Joe Kidd or something. Uh, I think we still have that one on the list to watch. And which one's the one where the, the guy... Has a knife on him, and he's like, "Are you still here?" It's one of his most famous lines of all time. I thought that was gonna be in this movie, and it sure wasn't. No. I thought "Hang 'Em High" was in this movie. <laughs> I thought "The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly" was in this movie. Yeah, where was Lee Van Cleef? I was just waiting for him to come out and, you know, try to take his gold or something. It's really nice to watch these. Old, old westerns and then see like the um, other actors in other movies that you watch and you're like oh they, he was in that one western but they're you know still still kind of acting the ones that aren't dead yeah but like every once in a while you'll catch a movie and then one one of the other actors will be in it and yeah and you're like there, there's that guy um, let's see. Well, this movie had... Who was the guy that... Play, what, the, what was the guy's name that was like his... He was... He joins... Okay, let's go through the plot of this movie. Clint Eastwood is a normal guy, and for some reason, during the Civil War, he's not a soldier. But then his family gets murdered, and he joins with the, confe with the Confederacy. Specifically, they get murdered by the Red Boot. The leathery boot tribe of Union that soldiers. Are, that are red. They're not even red. They're like sort of like a... If you say minstrel... A auburn brown. <laughs> anyway, so he... So he joins up and he has... Vengeance is upon them. So then the war ends and they're like, oh, we gotta... His, his old company in the Civil War, they get murdered. Okay, that's not... What the fuck? That's not what happened at all. They... His old company. Dude, no. we gotta watch this bullshit one no. more time again to Listen this to out. me God here. Damn it. Listen, that's not what happened at all. They murdered his family, and then immediately after he buried the family, all these other guys show up, and they're right. Basically... His company that he's with, he's with as a soldier. No, they're and just they have a rebels. Montage. They're rebels, and like these red boot people have d done the same thing to their whole families. And so they join when, up. When that ever they join up to get all of the red boots, and then they start killing them. And then the one guy is a traitor who was kind of like the head of this rebel 
faction. No, he, he was, wasn't. A, he he wasn't was, a traitor. He was side trading with the union, and so he he didn't know that they were going to kill them. She's, she's wrong. No, he didn't know that they were going to kill him. That part he didn't know, but he had been working with the the senator the whole the whole time, doing right, that, side jobs for that him. That was made clear, and the other guys did not know that. So he was still a traitor. I don't know. And he went know. after Josie Wells he on did assignment because cause he's a fucking traitor. No, it turned out at the end that he was always there to protect Josie Wales. He was not protecting Josie Wales. He was just going along. He just didn't want to get killed. Probably he never really that. wanted to kill him, but he was still on that mission. He was never going to kill Josie Wales. Maybe not, but he was still a traitor. Like, he is the reason that all those men got killed. No, he negotiated. He talked them into giving up and swearing allegiance to the Union. And then... For money. And when he, like, talked to the senator, the senator gave him money. And he said, I'm tired of doing these jobs for you. He threw the money back at him. So he had been working with the senator the whole time, taking money. Yes, there was an exchange of money. I know, but I think that they were supposed to get some money or some shit. No, that was him bringing... And then bringing, they fucked them out of the money. That so was no, him that bringing was, them like in. Third, nope. That was like a third party deal that they fucked up. Yep. I'm not watching this shit again just to straighten out this argument. <laughs> you don't argument. need to because I'm telling you the truth. You don't know. I watched it. I do know. Anyway, so then Steve, then, um, <laughs> Steve McQueen, he survives... Along with this kid that gets shot, and then the kid dies, and then they run into an Indian. <laughs> oh, I and forgot then, like, about woman. him. Man, like he used to be in more movies. I think he was in Poltergeist, wasn't he? That was uh, J. M. Michael Vincent, I believe. But like that Indian guy was in more movies back oh, in the, the day. Indian, he yeah, was... I forgot how like great he was. Like he's just deadpan. Well, I mean, he's, he's I'm, I'm pretty sure every Indian that was in this movie was deadpan. Po- I mean, there's only like 15 Indians in Hollywood. Like they're all in the same movies. If you're an Indian, I'm like just he, saying. Like he used to be fair in quite a few movies, and I had forgotten of his existence until we watched this. Dude, I get. I bet if you looked up his internet movie database, he has an, as many acting credits as Eric Roberts, and it's all like I, nobody Indian has that number many. three, <laughs> Indian number four, Chief Running Water. Nobody has that many acting credits as Eric Roberts. There's a lot of cowboy movies out there, and that guy was old. Yeah, I know. He was in, like, 80s movies. That's what I'm trying to tell you. He's in a zillion movies. I said I had forgotten that he existed until we watched this movie. And I remember, like, he he was funny in, in lots of movies. I mean, I forgot that the dude from um, Kevin that Kevin Costner movie, Dances with Wolves, you know, the guy that he tries to rape the white woman in that one part before Clint Eastwood kills him that guy was in he was he was like the main Indian dude that talks to Kevin Costner and dances with wolves yeah not ten bears yeah not chief ten bears bears that that was the chief the chief from one floor over the cuckoo's nest <laughs> yeah he he was uh, good too they were all good it was a pretty good movie um <clears throat> I can't think of what my favorite part might have been because they were just, it was just, you know, the movie had, was very formulaic and then like he would, he some he, some guys would attack him and then he would find some kind of accomplice to run away with, starting with the, with the one young kid, Jan Michael Vincent, <clears throat> then he finds the Indian, then he finds the Indian girl, then he finds the white family. And then there's those townspeople that are at that ghost town at the end or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just like a, the whole movie was just a repetition of scenes of him being attacked and having to shoot people, and then he runs away <coughs> to another place. Right, but there's repeat the formula. There's a level of comfort with the storytelling. It was good, and then at the end, what happened at the end? He stays and he just moves in with that with that woman, right? I believe so. Yeah. He's yeah, because like, the guy... And he changes like, his name to Clint Wilson. <laughs> yeah. But the, uh, my least favorite part was, like, him and her getting together. It was sort of dumb. 
You don't like females in action movies, do you? I do. Remember that I liked the... You liked Erica Eleniak in um, Under Siege, right? No. I liked... You liked Radon Chong in Commando, right? I liked the, the chick in Baby Yoda. Uh... God, what is her name? The, she, the she, mixed martial arts woman? Yep. Well, I thought she not, was a great character. Well, she, that's, I don't think we're talking about the same thing. We right? are talking about that I do like women if they're strong characters and believable characters. You're trying to say I don't like, like, like I'm just some sort of woman hater filled with jealous rage. Well, okay. <laughs> Um, he was so, proven wrong on camera. That's in what this happened. hierarchy of Clint Eastwood films, there's, we've seen like a dozen now. Mm -hmm. Where do you place this one? I'm thinking like maybe three or four, for lack of being able to remember exactly what happened in every one of them. I think I like Pale Rider better than this one. I'm gonna go. See, I already forgot about that one. I'm gonna go with The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, number one. The Paint the Town Red, number two. AKA Pale Rider. Is that Pell Rider? Like you just yeah. said it was something else while ago. Um, I did not. I brought up Joe Kidd. I brought up Hanging High. Hang him, hang him, hanging high. What's the one where he is kind of like frenemies through the whole movie with the guy that's like hanging at the beginning? Oh, that's weird. Is that the Hang good, Him High? The good, the bad, and the ugly? Is that the good, the bad? <laughs> I'm so confused. Yeah. You're talking about the one where with Eli Wallach and they go find the gold together and Lee Van Cleef is chasing them? That's the good, the bad, and the ugly. But isn't there another one where they're like... I mean, they're all pretty similar. But this guy, like, they plan it out and he's hanging and he's, like, going to get away. Bad, always shoots sure. him down. Yep. But they kind of, like, don't like each other. But they keep partnering up. Yes, that's one that... flew over the cuckoo's nest. Oh, okay, that's my, my favorite. Okay, um... So that's right, then, at number one. <laughs> right, and then there's Fistful of Dollars for a few dollars more. Then there was, uh, what was And that? I feel like I liked one of those. Like They're all awesome, what are you talking about? I know, but, like, I'm trying to remember clearly what the plot differences are so that I can Fistful rank them. of Dollars is the one where there's the two <laughs> warring factions of, like, you know, Cowboy oh, yeah, Mafia. Yeah. That one wasn't my... Favorite. For a few dollars more is the one where he robs the bank with that, uh, with that, you know, gang leader, and he pretend him, him and Lee Van Cleef help with the bank heist, but they're also bounty hunters, and they I shoot the whole game. remember that. Did we watch it? We sure did. I do and like then, Lee Van Cleef, What was the though? name of the one where he was a rodeo rider? Oh, that's, um, one of the... That was like newer ones. Um, that was like the outlaw of Billy Blanks. No, it's not. Where's our Clint Eastwood? Every which way but loose. It was. Um, it's along those lines. Like it came out like right before that. It wasn't like a old western. I like that one. It was. Um, but the outlaw Josie Wales was better than. I liked it better than Hang 'Em High for sure. Maybe not as good as. Uh, Pale Rider, and not as good as the Three Spaghetti Westerns. What was your least Better favorite? Better than that. The, my least favorite was the Civil War era one where he moves in at the girls' school. Yeah, me that too. That was brutal. Did we watch Where Eagles Dare together? Mm, That's the one where he kills Nazis by the dozen. I don't think we did. Dude, we gotta watch But we that. also watched, like, you know, Unforgiven. Which, oh, Unforgiven is That's one of my, my top. Yeah, hang them. Uh, what we just watch? Not hang them high. The outlaw Josie Wales. <laughs> that one is not as good as Unforgiven. Right, Unforgiven probably like number three. This Maybe so number confusing. two. I feel like I'd have to write like a little cheat sheet on on a notepad. With with synopsis. You know how like I'm a visual landmark person. I also need yeah. that that kind of thing in my movies. Like, you have to tell me a specific, like, landmark that the, happened. You need the letters of the title of the film to be made out of screenshots of the film? Yeah. That would, they should do that for all movies, really. <laughs> but anyway, um, if you're a Clint Eastwood fan or a fan of westerns 
I really even just like movies. It was a pretty good movie. Yeah, I think that's a movie for everyone. Everybody likes it's com- the got comedy in it. Yeah, like it's good. If you like to see a grown man spit tobacco on dogs, <laughs> that, that a was movie. a little much. I was like, wow, he really is spitting on that dog. He spit on everybody. I think, like, and they also um, brand a cow, and I think it's probably real. And then they push those horses down. To the ground. Oh yeah, this was before. And uh, I was like, "Ooh, Peta." This was before Milo and Otis, where they, <laughs> you know, they could just do whatever they wanted. It looked with the legit, like like they were. I don't know if that was Clint Eastwood stunt double or him, but they were for real pushing those horses down to the ground. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I guess that was pretty bad. I mean, I guess it's like something a normal ranch hand would do, but like you know, in today's world, that's not something that most. Of these young The casual like moviegoer is not trying to see the branding. Well, especially that. But All most right. people in this day and age would think that that was like animal abuse pushing a horse down to the ground, even though it's probably not. For fans of animal abuse, don't don't watch that. The outlaw Josie Wales is for you. <laughs>